Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to the 18th annual Jean and Paul Sullivan Breakfast. Good morning, Democrats. If you're a Democrat, say, I love America. OK, we got that settled, haven't we? Um, before my blessing, I'd like to remind us just a little bit about what the Democratic Party is. And I'm taking liberty, and I already warned Debbie that I had a surprise for her, because this isn't a typical blessing. I'm not a typical Christian. Uh, with that said, I'll continue. The Democratic Party platform states that Democrats are the party of inclusion. We know the diversity is not our problem. It is our promise. And Democrats, as Democrats, we respect differences of perspective and beliefs and pledge to work together to move this country forward. When we disagree, we do not I'm sorry, I have this handwritten because my printer wouldn't work. Of course, doesn't that happen, right? Um, we do not merely seek common ground. We seek to reach higher ground. The Democratic Party embraces people of all faiths. Accordingly, we are motivated to unite faith communities for our common values. The Democratic Party is a place where we can stand together and fight to overcome the forces of division that seek to put religious groups to elite, to, I'm sorry, to, uh, I can't read my writing, isn't that a shame, huh? Um, to, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just um, wing it, yeah. That put, uh, put different faiths at odds with each other. And that is what's happening in this country right now. And we've got to fight against that. It, doesn't, doesn't, it isn't just the Republicans. We have Democrats doing the same thing. Let's remember our values. We work to foster relationships in our nonprofit, profit, oh my gosh, allies and faith leaders across the country to improve our beloved communities. We stand for an open and respectful interfaith dialogue because it can lead to greater tolerance and acceptance. We are united in one cause, to help all men, women, and children in any kind of need or distress and enhance their quality of life and ensure justice for all. Let us pray to the creator of us all, Lord of this universe, Holy Father, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, Holy Spirit, Mother Earth, we call you by many names. Let us respect every human being from the center which we call the race of men. Let the plan of light and love work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore your plan on Earth. We thank you for the lives of Jean and Paul Sullivan and the examples they set for us. Let us be reminded of their perseverance, hard work, and values. We ask you to bless the recipients of the Jean Paul Sullivan Scholarship in her studies. We ask your blessing not only on those gathered here this morning, but on all the residents of Brockton. Help us to conduct our business with dignity and wisdom, keeping your will for us and them in mind at all times. Bless this food. Nourish our bodies and minds. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with you and me. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let us please stand so we can do the Pledge of Allegiance.
Thank you. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, food. All right. So today's breakfast culinary extravaganza will be served in the form of a buffet. Um, and we're going to do anybody who has a red tablecloth first. So if you could please make your way to uh, have breakfast. Anybody with a red tablecloth, you're up first. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our fellow Democrats. Today, we come together to memorialize two dedicated Democrats, Jean and Paul Sullivan. They would be proud. It was their belief that each election cycle should come, we should come together at this breakfast and listen to candidates that is the democratic way. At this time, may I have all candidates who are running for office to rise. We need to applaud these ordinary citizens that have accepted the challenge and have committed themselves to making a better Brockton for all of us. I ask you to volunteer with a campaign this fall. Also challenge you, as Red Sullivan did of me, to ask, who are you working for? Please help us make a better Brockton. Thank you. At this time, I have a few special awards I would like to present. <laughs> it's called the Democratic, De Dedicated Democrat. And the first person I would like to call up would be John Buckley Jr. He has worked tirelessly his entire life in the Democratic Party. Where's John? Oh, here he comes. <laughs> also, I would like to let you know I have another award for Joan Holl Madden Holland. But she had to leave us to go to the Salisbury Park. That's today, yes. So join them this afternoon, please. Also, I have two others, Steve Thomasy and Sue Thomasy. I see them helping everybody all the time. All the time. If you'll please come up. Sure. Hello, everybody. It, it, this is a wonderful event when you can't find your way from the back to the front because there's no aisles. So. I want to thank the committee for the great job they did, and thank you all for coming. Great. Thanks, John. Thank you for all you do always. We appreciate you. Sue Thomasy and Steve Thomasy. Are we being shy? He's in the back, too. All right. And my last award. <laughs> all right. My last award is to the hottest working secretary that the city committee has ever had, Susan Nicastro, also Ward 1 city councilor. She wears many hats. Oh, ward 4. All right, sorry. I gave you a new ward. Ward 4. You'll accept Steve's? OK. And Susan. And Susan Thomasy. Okay. Susan? Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say Good morning, everyone. I have the pleasure and the relief of being a candidate for uh, Ward 4 City Councilor. I'm running for re election and also not having an opposition at this time. Yay! Yes. Um, I'm probably the happiest girl in the room. but. I just want to thank you all for being here. I want to encourage you to vote in the preliminary election on September 17th. Ward 4 residents, please vote for me. And thank you very much.
giving us sauces. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Whis Thank you. Thank you, Susan. She's giving out sausage, so <laughs> she's feeding the masses. Um, we're going to, is Stephen, Congressman Stephen Lynch here? Stephen, please come and say just a few words, please. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Good morning, everyone. I know there were a lot of local races going on. First of all, Senator Markey, my colleagues in government, uh, good to be with you. Uh, Red and Jean Sullivan were, were dear, dear friends of mine. And uh, every year, having this breakfast in their memory is, is, a, is a, a way to pay respect to their wonderful service to the Democratic Party and to the city of Brockton. So thank you for doing that. They were an unbelievable team, uh, and we had, we had a lot of, lot of great moments together. Um, as well, I want to remember our mayor, Mayor Bill Carpenter, and the great work that he did. Another dear friend of mine, and Bill Carpenter captured, he, he really epitomized the city of Brockton. You know, never a back step. He was relentless, relentless on behalf of the people of Brockton made sure that the basic services that every citizen of Brockton needed uh, got done. And uh, like I say, a frequent flyer to Washington to ask for more and more federal money. Like I say, the guy was relentless, and he will be missed. But uh, I know we have a field of uh, strong candidates that are trying to succeed him. Succeed him. Big shoes to fill, i got to tell you right now. But uh, whoever wins in that race, you have my commitment to work with you on behalf of the city of Brockton. I only have one message this morning. As Democrats, we have no shortage of issues, right? We want to reform health care. We want to change campaign finance. You know, uh, we, we look at the tax structure and, and, and uh, you know, fair taxes. But all of that falls to the wayside, the environment. You know, you can name any number of issues that are near and dear to our heart. But if we don't get rid of Trump, if, if, we don't beat, if we don't beat Donald Trump, it's like Dr. King said and, and, and John Lewis said, you got to keep your eye on the prize, OK? If we, if we fall to fighting between Democrats, that's it. You're playing right into Trump's hands. He's already got 40% of the vote, you know? You can see what the, you know what the Republicans are doing now? I read a story yesterday that some of the red states out west are canceling their Republican primaries. So he doesn't, so there goes democracy, right, on their side. They don't really, they're not into that. But not only that, but they're trying to save him as much money and as much energy and as much aggravation as possible to make sure that he's the strongest he can be when he goes into the race against whoever our nominee will be. Meanwhile, we got 23 candidates, or I had 23 candidates, and we're beating the heck out of each other. You know, that's not a, that's not a good recipe for success. So we, I, I know we got to debate these issues, but can we do it without tacking brother and sister Democrats and come together, you know? That's, that's the message that I have. You know, we're, we're in for a fight here. And we need, we need to be united. We really do, as Democrats. We care about all the good things. But, but remember, if, God forbid, God forbid, but if, if Trump gets reelected, you know what that means, right? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, saw her at the Capitol the other day. She'll be 88 when the next president is sworn into office. She's wearing high heels on a marble floor, by the way. I felt like I had to make sure, make sure she was safe getting out of there. You know, Stephen Breyer, he'll be 83 when the next president takes office. Uh, and then you don't know what Clarence Thomas is going to do, but, you know, it would get, if he left, it would give Donald Trump the ability to appoint three more justices, probably a more conservative uh, uh, Republican appointee than, than Thomas is right now. And that will change the landscape of civil rights in this country for another 30 or 40 years. We, we cannot let that happen. So... 
Job one, job one has to be getting rid of Donald Trump with whichever, whichever Democratic nominee uh, emerges. We all got to come together behind that person. So it's an honor for me to represent the city of Brockton in the United States Congress. It's an honor for me to be here. God bless you all. Let's fight together. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're on to our keynote speaker. He's the junior United States Senator from Massachusetts. Having served 37 years in the United States House of Representatives, then becoming our United States Senator, he is the third most prolific legislator, having filed in past 570 bills. And recently, he has spearheaded the Green New Deal gun control legislation, immigration reform, and he's a national leader in substance misuse prevention. His concern for the Plymouth County is evident. He has visited Brockton four times in the past two years. Last April, he held an inspiring town hall in Brockton, returning not long afterwards to announce a grant to benefit Brocktonians. It is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker and my friend, United States Senator Edward Markey. Thank you, Thank Deb. You. Thank you. Thank you, Deb, so much. Thank you, Brockton Democrats, for coming out here today. What an incredible turnout for a Sunday morning, but the thing about Brockton Democrats is you do not agonize, you organize. And that's what today is all about. It's about getting together early, as Steve Lynch just said, to ensure that Donald Trump becomes a footnote in history, that Donald Trump is an aberration, that Donald Trump is not allowed to have an additional four years as the president of our country. That is what Brockton is all about. That is what this gathering is all about. It is mobilizing to make sure that we win in 2020. Now, Steve Lynch is here. And Steve, I don't have to tell you, is a phenomenal congressman. But let me tell you about Steve and I. Steve and I, right now, for the last three days, four days, five days, we should have been on the floor of the House and Senate in emergency session to ensure that we ban assault weapons, ban high capacity magazines for those weapons, have background checks for every single gun that's purchased in our country, that we make NRA stand for not relevant anymore in American politics. That is what we should be doing. That is what Steve and I want to do for this country. That is the agenda that happens if Democrats win in 2020. We hold the House, we flip the Senate, we dump Donald Trump. It's a simple three-point plan that we need in order to put America on a path for progress once again in 2020. So it's my honor to be here with you once again in Brockton. And so I tell you, each and every one of you here this morning, I am running for re-election to the United States Senate in 2020. And I ask for your support. Partnering with Steve Lynch in the House and Senate, we will work to put in place a progressive agenda for our country. Martin Luther King had a dream. He had a dream that you would not be identified on the basis of your race, of your country of origin. Well, Donald Trump has a dream as well. He has a dream that there will be no more Muslims, no more Mexicans, no more immigrants, that there will be women of color who will be denigrated on an ongoing basis. 
Donald Trump has a dream for this country. And he has supporters that want to see a continuation and an exacerbation of the problems which he has created. Now, for me, that goes right to the core of who we are as Democrats and who we are as Americans. So we're in a fight. And we know one thing for sure. He and his MAGA supporters are not going to give up. But he has to understand this about the Democrats. We're not giving up. We're going to have the largest turnout that we have ever produced in the history of our country. And we need you to be able to do this. For me, the fight is on because the fight for the future is right now on the line. Leadership is always about the future, and that is what Brockton is all about. We have more than 100,000 Americans who were killed or injured by the epidemic of gun violence in the United States last year. The fight is on. The NRA has the Republican Party in a vice-like grip. In 10 of the last 11 years, we're the warmest ever recorded in the history of the planet. The fight is on. That's why I introduced the Green New Deal with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, so that we could have an intergenerational partnership to fight climate change, to fight this incredible threat to the planet. The planet is running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for planets. We have to put in place the preventative programs. We know from scientists, our own scientists, that the planet will warm by 9 degrees Fahrenheit by 2100, 81 years from now. 9 degrees Fahrenheit. It's an existential threat to the planet. We also know that the Republicans say that the Green New Deal is socialism. Well, what do they call 100 years of tax breaks for the oil industry, the coal industry, the natural gas industry? That is socialism, regulatory and tax favoritism. So if that's what they want for their industry, give us some of that socialism for wind and solar and batteries and all electric vehicles and all electric buildings, and we will have union jobs by the millions installing the new energy technologies of the 21st century. Failure is not an option. We know that when little, sick children with cancer can be deported, when 800,000 dreamers live in fear that a knock could come on the door from an ICE agent to deport them. We know that this is the only home that those dreamers have ever had, that those TPS recipients have ever had. The fight is on in the United States. When Donald Trump works to defund Planned Parenthood, the only access that millions of Americans have to the health care they need. The fight is on. When the opioid epidemic and the fentanyl epidemic continues to take tens of thousands of lives, and Donald Trump's solution is to build a wall across our southern border, the fight is on. On. And when Republicans and Donald Trump threaten the workers who want to organize unions in our country, the fight is on, ladies and gentlemen. Because we know on every one of these issues, there is one thing that separates Donald Trump from the people in this room. We are right and he is wrong on every single one of those issues. When Donald Trump says he wants to make America great again, what he means is that he wants to make America hate again. That is what he is talking about. But this fight will only be won if we have a giant blue wave that sweeps across this country. If we have people up and working in a way that they never have before to ensure that we prevent him from having another four years. On climate change, if he gets four more years, it's almost a death sentence for the planet because we will have sat on our hands 
for eight years and sent a signal to China and India and other countries that they do not have to do anything as well. So we need all of you. We need the Brockton Democrats. We need the Plymouth County Democrats up and fighting and working. This is our generational challenge, which has been presented to us. This is the time, this is the place. You are the people who will make this difference. And we come from revolutionaries. The American Revolution was started right here. The abolitionist movement was started right here. The suffragette movement was started right here. The Affordable Care Act revolution was started right here. The gay marriage revolution was started right here. You are the descendants of all of these revolutionaries who rose up in their time in order to ensure that we would have the protections that should be enjoyed by every single American. So it is a great honor to be here with you. My father drove a truck for the Hood Mill Company. My father grew up on the first floor of a triple-decker in Lawrence. And when I ran for the Senate, you grow up where your mother tells your father he's going to live. <laughs> so my mother was from Malden. My father was from Lawrence. So I went up to ring the doorbell on the first floor of the triple-decker at 88 Phillips Street in Lawrence to see who lives there now where my father and his four brothers and sisters and my grandmother and grandfather lived in the shadow of the mills. And the door opened and a Dominican family came out onto the porch. And the accents were different, but the aspirations the same for that family as existed for the Markey family. And John Markey's son is the United States Senator. I know how fortunate I am, but that was a dream they had, a vision. Steve Lynch, the same way. But let's be honest, everyone in this room feels the same way about their family story, huh? It's an American story. And the names and the places that the countries that we all come from, they're different, but the story in terms of the aspirations are the same. My mother, my mother was gonna be president, she was president of the senior class in high school, but when she was a junior, my, mother, my grandmother died. And there were five sisters, so before Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one of the girls had to stay home. That's the social safety net. So my mother had to be the mother for the three younger daughters, and the other sister had to go off to work. Well, that'll derail a family's plan in Malden. So she's senior class president, but now at home. So she had to raise that family, and then she had me like 20 years later, then my twin brothers in the next year, like at age... 38 and 39. She married my father, who drove a truck for the Hood Milk Company. You don't want to be raised by this woman, by the way. She's already raised a family. But <laughs> she knew what she was doing. And what my mother would always say to us is that we were never going to work as hard as my father driving the truck or the immigrants who got off the boat to come here in the family. And we knew we were not going to be as smart as my mother, who did trigonometry and calculus and Latin for fun at the kitchen table, even though she never had trigonometry or calculus. We knew we weren't as smart as my mother. But she would tell us that we would have more opportunities, more opportunities than they had. So I realized how fortunate I was in growing up in that house in Malden as a commuter to Boston College, as a commuter to Boston College Law School. We knew we were privileged, even though the kids over in the dorms looked like they had better lives. Huh? The first lawyer I ever met was the first professor who walked into my law school class. I never met a lawyer. My first trip to Washington was to be sworn in as a congressman. I had never been there before I won the seat. I'm from Malden. How was I getting to Washington? So my feeling is, that we have to open up those possibilities for every other family. That everyone is entitled to know that their children have those same opportunities provided to them. 
a democratization of access to opportunity through education, through health care, through housing, and breaking down a discriminatory barrier, then get out of the way, because those kids will absolutely change the world. That's how I see it. That's how I see our country. The Malden and Brockton are not too dissimilar in terms of the kinds of families who live there. But I know, I know that we can do this. I know that the 21st century is going to be better than the 20th and the 19th century. When my mother got Alzheimer's, my father, uh, I said to my father at one point, should we think about a plan for Ma, maybe in a nursing home? And my father said, Eddie, it was an honor that your mother married me. She was a brilliant woman. Your mother is not leaving this living room. Never. And so for me, this kind of stoic, idealistic commitment to the highest values which we have as families and as a country is something that inspires me and I know that it inspires everyone who is here in this room. It's who we have to be as a nation. And it's just the opposite of who Donald Trump is and how he sees our nation operating. So we should be that shining place on a hill. We should have this incredible Brockton, Plymouth County Assembly be the leaders, the cutting edge, fighting for the future. And I will be there with you. I'll be with Deb Garland. I'll be with the entire Democratic City Committee. I'm glad we're honoring Red and Gene Sullivan, Mayor Rodriguez, and Steve already mentioned it. There was no one who ever worked harder for the city of Brockton than Mayor Carpenter. He was down there fighting for every opioid program, every economic development program, getting a disproportionate share of those funds out of Washington. To Senator Mike Brady, to uh, Representative uh, Jerry Cassidy and Claire Cronin, Michelle Dubois, to Tom O'Brien and Greg Hanley, John Buckley, Matt McDonough, to Bobby Creedon, Bobby McCarthy, Alan Pesovich, John Walsh, all of you. Um, I pledge to you that I will give you everything that I have, everything, if you give me the honor of representing you in the United States Senate. You know, when we get elected, when Steve and I, when Steve and I get elected, we get a card. And this card allows us to vote on the floor of the United States House of Representatives and the United States Senate. Many of you have union cards in your pocket. Many of you have cards that identify you and the organizations who you represent. Well, every single day on the floor of the Senate, this has been your card, voting for your interests here in Plymouth County and in the city of Brockton. And I give you my word that every day on the floor of the Senate, I will be your voice, I will be your vote, and I thank you so much for the great honor of being here today. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my cousin Paul is going to be doing the presentation. Uh, Good morning, everybody. So, and Paul's had some time uh, to look over uh, things to do with Catherine, our recipient, Catherine Healy. So uh, I'll pass the microphone to my cousin Paul. Thank you, cousin, very much. Well, good morning to everybody. Great crowd. Great candidates, but we have our candidate here in our winner for the Stadensky Scholarship, Catherine Healy from Ward 6. But I have to tell you, I, I read the letter. I wasn't on the committee, and, and uh, I was so, when uh, she's a band booster member, a lifeguard, a swim team member. She did the breaststroke. I did the butterfly. But 
not with her. She's too good, good, too good for me. This is Catherine Healy. She's going to Babson, and uh, she's going to be a business major. She, she's also a barista. Well, I was a barista up at Starbucks up the west side, right? That's the one you were at. So you might recognize her from there. With that, this is the envelope, and uh, Jerry made one, one request. Please cash that check. They chased us. And okay. would, <laughs> would you like to say a couple of words? Sure. All right. I would just like to say like a, a quick thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity for sure to be able to, you know, go to college and be able to have the funds to do so. And it's definitely um, an honor to receive this award, definitely in the memory of the Sudenskis. And as well, just to be able to go on and uh, pursue what I want to do in college. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Committee McConnor, for you also made a great choice. On the local level, we're joined today by Robert Sullivan, Brockton Counselor at Large, <laughs> Winthrop Farwell, Brockton Counselor at Large, Shirley Asak, Ward Four City. I'm sorry, Ward Seven City Counselor, <laughs> Jack Lally, Ward Six City Counselor. Okay. Dennis Aneri, Ward 3 City Councilor. <laughs> Timothy Cruz, Ward 1 City Councilor. Moses Rodriguez, Mayor of Brockton. Mm -hmm. Is that everyone? Okay. And we're also joined by Carlos Da Silva, the Vice Chair of the Hingham School Committee. We are joined by Mark Lindy and Tony Branch, who are the Brockton representatives on the Southeastern Regional School Board. <laughs> Former Ward 7 City Councilor Chris McMillan is with us. Okay. And then we are joined by Plymouth County Commissioner Greg Hanley. <laughs> Matt McDonough. Plymouth County Register of Probate is with us. Robert Creedon, Plymouth County Clerk of Courts is with us. John Buckley, Plymouth County Register of Deeds is here. Tom O'Brien, Plymouth County Treasurer is here. Okay. Claire Cronin and Jerry Cassidy and Michelle Dubois our state representatives are here. Uh, state Senator Michael Brady is here. And of course, they are our mighty Brockton delegation. Okay. Peggy Curtis, state committee woman, is here. As is Linda Broadford and Peg McKenzie, also of the state committee. Alan Pesovich, our senior state committee woman, is here. And then, of course, of course, Senator Markey was here on the federal level. Former Representative Jim Cantwell, State Representative Jim Cantwell, is here. Who else? If there's anyone that I missed who wasn't on this list, I apologize to you. And I thank you all for being here today. And at this time, may I pass the microphone to State Senator Michael Brady. Well, first of all, we can't forget our great esteemed colleague who served with me in the State House. And she allowed me to sit next to her. And she keeps our clerk of courts in line, Bob Creed, Representative Jerry Creed. Let's give her a round of applause. And also our former Registrar of Probate, Bob McCarthy, was here as well. So let's give him a round of applause. And I, I don't know if we forget anybody else. Dennis Sinapoli, former Ward 5 Council, the Fighting Fifth. Thank you for coming. And Mark Lawton as well. He was a former state representative and former judge who served in the courts. That's it. I think we got everybody. I'm handing it over to our lovely colleague on the City Council, She's in charge here, so I'm giving it back to you. Thank you very much. And I will pass it to Chuck Blanchett. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chuck. 
and I will pass it to, oh, I ran out of people. All right, so, <laughs> all right. So now the time that you've all been waiting for, this is when we have all our Democratic candidates running for office to come up and share a couple of minutes of, uh, of what they're doing, what they're running for, and, uh, and uh, you know, share a little bit about themselves. So um, I, uh, I actually had the, uh, <laughs> I had the, uh, the opportunity to pull the names out of a hat myself. So please uh, don't yell at me if you're running for office. No particular order, we just pulled them out of a hat. So we're gonna start off with the mayor candidates, mayoral candidates, um, in, in no particular order, with the exception of this order that I pulled out of a hat and I still feel guilty about doing it. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, if you could put your hands together for Mark Lawton, who will be the first one up here. All right, thanks. So you have two minutes, let it be known, two minutes, and I take no prisoners, right? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mark Lawton. Uh, great opportunity for me. Uh, I heard Eddie Markey talking about his ancestors. My grandfather lost his life on the corner of Prospect Street, North Warren Avenue in 31, leaving seven kids, one of whom was my father, who was five. My father, although he served in World War II, was, was critically injured, served in the House of Representatives from 52 to 62. The issues then were helping the marginalized, fighting for minimum wage and laborers' rights. When I served in the House of Representatives in the 70s into the mid-80s, the issues really weren't much different. They were very much the same. And now I am running for the office of mayor where the issues are somewhat different, and I'm fighting for greater diversity so that our city government looks more and more like the people who live here. I'm also fighting for reduced crime using the same crime-fighting modalities that uh, Bill Carpenter used. But there's a third manifestation of leadership, I think, that comes from the mayor's office, and that is working with people like Ed Markey, who I served in the Massachusetts House with for many years before he went to the U.S. Congress, and working, for people like, working with people like Steve Lynch, not just for fair tax code treatment, but also working for things like protecting those from Honduras, Guatemala, and Haiti, people who came here because they had to escape national tragedies and who sought temporary protected status, TPS status. I'll fight for that because they deserve it, no less than my ancestors and no less than yours. My name is Mark Lawton and I'm running for mayor and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you could put your hands together for Bishop Tony Branch. Good morning, everyone. If you're a Democrat, and you should be, clap your hands. Mm -mm. If you're a Democrat that believes in equality, equity, and justice, clap your hands. I think you all can do better. I think this is my side. If you're a Democrat that believes in equality, equity, and justice, clap your hands. So it is an honor to be at this microphone, but it is a deeper honor to be among family, the Democratic family. Because no matter where you are in this political season, we are gonna be united as one. If you believe that, clap your hands. I, I heard someone talk about red, and, and, and what stuck to me, and I know the, the preacher in me that stuck to me is, who are we working for? On this campaign trail, what I've learned from the residents of Brockton, they're looking for rent stabilization. And what that means is that we're gonna have an inclusionary housing model that says that if you develop in the city of Boston, in the city of Brockton, oops, if you just said some, well, there may be some Boston people in here, but if you develop in the city of Brockton, 10% of that should be set aside for below market rent. I think that's what the people want. Please, if you believe in the people, clap your hands. Wait a minute, let me, get, let me get this. Isn't it our mantle to have fair and affordable housing as Democrats? That's not a political decision, that's our party. Clap your hands. Our residents have been crisscrossing the city and they've seen new constructions go up. They've seen public works 
go, they are, that are being developed. But they don't see residents that, that look like them, and they don't see women and minorities. And we're going to change that. So if you are doing work in the city of Brockton, you will, there will be a set aside to make sure that minorities or women are included in this work. And finally, because I know that my time is tight, we're talking about public safety. What we're going to do is have a public safety model that is called catch and convict. Yeah, we may have more police officers on the streets, but we are going to maximize video surveillance in this city so that we'll be able to catch perpetrators when they're doing the crime. I'm running for mayor of Brockton. I ask for your support. And guess what else? I love you all. God bless you. Thank you, sir. We always joke around to see who's uh, better dressed, uh, me or Tony, and he wins all the time. <laughs> all right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you could put your hands together for Mr. Robert Sullivan. First of all, good morning, Democrats. Good morning, Democrats. This is an awesome turnout. I've been a city councilor at large for 14 years. I come to this every year. This is, hands down, the best turnout. So I'm clapping for all of you. You understand the importance right now, September 17th preliminary, right? We're at a paramount right now. The city of Brockton can either go up or down. And I humbly am asking for your vote of confidence on September 17th. I have worked with four different mayors, Harrington, Belzotti, Carpenter, and now Rodriguez. I've served 14 years and done 14 budgets. I'm a proud Brocktonian, born and raised, met my wife Maria at Brockton High School, raising our three kids here in the city of champions. But we can do better. We can do better, ladies and gentlemen. The only way we can do better is to go to the polls, to elect people that are going to work for you. I've done it for 14 years. I'm not going to change. I'm going to get there every day and fight for you because Brockton's too important. We need to have a thriving economy, right? We need to have safer community, right? A cleaner community. Code enforcement needs to be enforced. Perception's reality, ladies and gentlemen. We need to make sure when people come to Brockton, they understand the beauty. The beauty's in here, all of us, right? It's been a quilt over the years. My grandparents came from Ireland to work in the factories. Now it's just a different wave of immigrants. That's what the fabric of Brockton is. But we need to make sure everybody feels included. Everybody has a voice. That's what it means to serve. And I am asking you right now that, first of all, tell your friends, tell your family, go to the polls, the preliminary. Democrats, I'll even say Republicans, unenrolled independents, but the Democrats, and please go to the polls because at the end of the day, it's vitally, vitally important. My slogan is this, leadership for Brockton's future. Leadership for Brockton's future. And I truly, I truly adhere to that. And you know what? Experience matters. I've been there for 14 years. I've done 14 budgets. The firefighters in Brockton, 144, have proudly endorsed me. PFFM of Massachusetts, professional firefighters have endorsed me. Local 12, the plumbers, IBW 2222. But you know what? Those endorsements are awesome, but I'm looking for Brockton voters to endorse me on the 17th. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks, John. John Bradley, Durrenen Court. Durrenen Court. See, I try so hard. Good morning, Democrat. How you guys doing? Well, let's face it. Uh, it is my distinguished uh, honor uh, to be at your presence. And I, as I was driving down here this morning, and we got to attend this event, uh, I come to the conclusion that why I am I going down there. And I realize that the city of Brockton is a place where people like you live. And the greatness of this place is the diversity that we have among us. And one of the things that I've been paying attention, especially from U.S. Senator Ed Markey and some of the people that spoke already, is the greatness of our nations and how we got here. And as you know, uh, I was born in Haiti, and I came in this country about nine years ago. And when I first came here, I could not speak a word of English. And here I am eight years later asking you for your vote September 17th to be the next mayor of Brockton. We don't have enough time to go through the history in regard to why we are here, but here's what I can tell you. As we speak, I am not just a candidate. I am an elected official serving you in the city of Brockton. This election will determine the next five years, 10 years, and even 20 years in the city. Now is the moment I believe we gotta embrace not just us, but also the greatness of the city by coming up with bold and progressive leadership and vote for people who has backbone and will do what they say and act accordingly. 
As a young person myself, 29 years old, I couldn't be more proud of having a place to live as the city of Brockton. Those of you who know me, you know that, that I'm bold, I'm progressive, and I'm determined. And that's why we're here. We gotta talk about equity and balance for all of us. I come up with a platform that represents everyone. Education, public safety, youth empowerment, senior homelessness. These are the things that I think is so important. But today, here's what I'm gonna ask you. Listen to my voice. Look at me in my face. See and witness what I've been able to do. And take my words for it. When I become the next mayor of Brockton, you will have somebody at City Hall that will work for you, with you, and not against you. This selection is about all of us, and the result will determine the outcome. On September 17th, please, I am begging you, join me on this journey, and let's believe in Brockton together. My slogan is, believe in Brockton. If you believe in Brockton, I believe in you. And if you believe in yourself together, let's make this happen, and let's do it by voting for Jim Bradley, the winning court, September 17th, the next mayor of Brockton. If you get my name, my name will be the longest name on the ballot. Let's get it done. I love you all. God bless you. Let's get this done. True story. <laughs> yeah, man. It's the truth. It's the longest name on the ballot. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, shorter name. Put your hands together for Jimmy Pereira. Thank you again for the introduction. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am so honored and happy to be here. Again, my name is Jimmy Pereira, mayoral candidate for the city of Brockton. I am a uh, uh, the Democrat, runner for mayor. I'm also first vice chair president of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. And I'm proud to be a Democrat. This is the party of inclusion, innovation, and it's the hardest working party that is working for our hard working families. I was born and raised in the city of Brockton. I was an average youth, single mother household, went through the foster care system. But through perseverance and resiliency, I now work at the Old County Planning Council as a community transportation planner, working for 17 communities, Brockton included. Seeing progress being made in those communities, not so much in Brockton. The diverse experience that I have and the public service that I want to bring to the city of Brockton is what we need because empathy is important. And because of the transition that I've faced and the challenges I've faced and the families that are in Brockton still facing those challenges, we need a lead leader that knows what's going on and is not going to stand idle and take action. Empowerment and representation is very important in the city of Brockton. We have a very diverse community, and as a public servant, it is my duty to bring forth opportunities for the betterment of the public good. Bringing people together and listening to their ideas is my greatest asset. Representation and inclusion is important to everyone, whether people of color, the LGBTQ community, and individuals with disabilities. Our public schools are underfunded, and we need to make sure that we fight for equal shares at the state level, and also making sure that we fight for our teachers and fight for our students, because every kid counts. Crime has been an issue, and it continues to be an issue. I have a lot of friends that have lost to gun violence, and we need to make sure that we look at what we can do to make change on the local level. We need to keep the momentum moving as we continue to build a more inclusive, innovative, and vibrant Brockton. We need a mayor that will not only embody the democratic values, but also show up to do the work and not stand idle. To all the Democrat running for mayors, the ones that truly embody our democratic values, let's make the party of Gene and Red Sullivan proud with mutual respect and commitment to our shared values. Remember, vote on Tuesday, September 17th. It's time for change. It's time for a new generation of leadership. Thank you. Just, I, I just have a few people that we did miss, and I want to make sure we acknowledge. Candidate for Ward 4 School Committee, Tony Rodriguez. Candidate for Plymouth County Commissioner, Jack Reardon. Michael Bradley, Marshfield Selectman and candidate for Plymouth County Commissioner. And Carlos De Silva for Plymouth County Commissioner. And Steve Laird, Ward 1 City Council undeclared. Leonis? Okay. Lanus, okay, I got the name wrong. 
Is there anybody else in the room that has not, that is a candidate that was not recognized? Thank you very much. Moving on to Council at Large. And again, like we pulled names out of a hat. Um, so we're going to start off with uh, Moises Rodriguez. Our mayor. Our mayor. Good morning. Uh, breakfast was pretty good. What about the server, the guy that was actually handing the plate? What did you guys think of him? No? I got $4.50, and then I had to pay $5, so I'm down 50 cents. But uh, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here. As you know, that for the last two months, I've been uh, uh, mayor in this city, uh, taking up where um, Bill Carpenter left off to continue to move our city forward. Uh, I was not a candidate for mayor uh, before that, and I decided not to be a candidate for mayor after that. So I wanted to return to the city council and continue to do what I've done for the last five and a half years. Uh, there's not a single person that, that you see in signs behind me that don't care a great deal about this city. But you need to be aware of what we're able to do, what our limitations are, and don't be fooled by promises. Uh, this city is not uh, some little town, you know, south of Avon. It's a large city and it has city issues, serious issues that we all need to come together as a community to fix. So I don't want you to sit here and listen to candidates promising you the world, knowing for the fact that they're not going to be able to do much other than what the, our resources provide us. But what, one thing that I can tell you from myself and some of the folks that I've served with in the council is that we are here looking after your interests. The job of a city councilor in the city is to represent you. We're not here to build roads. We're not here to build schools. We're not here to build, you know, hire police officers. That's not the function of the mayor. I mean, well, not the function of the mayor. <laughs> That's not the function of the city council. See, I'm a, little, I'm a little confused. I got these two hats that I got to figure out exactly which to put on, when and why. But I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that what our job really is. Our job is to basically represent, represent your interest and not to promise you the world. Because we're not going to be able to deliver it. And we're going to be here again two years from now talking about the same exact thing. We got plans, we got this, we got that, but the reality is all you need is to make sure you have a voice in city government to represent your interests with honesty, transparency, and with you at heart. That's what I plan on doing, and I think I'm number 47 <laughs> on, the, on the list since there, there's, I think there's 50-something people running for council at large. But I'm, weird, I'm down in the middle somewhere. When you find my name, it's Moses Rodriguez. I've been on that council for five and a half years. Would like to go back uh, for my uh, sixth or perhaps the final time. But vote for me on, the, on September 17th, and I'll continue to be your mayor until January 6th. Thank you very much for having me, and enjoy your day. Right. Uh, if we could have Tina Cardoza up. Hey. Thank you all for having me. I don't have a speech, and that's so funny that uh, Moses said he's number 46. I'm like number 52, because him and I are like uh, next to each other, I believe, on the ballot. Um, but besides that, all I have for you guys today is the love for the city, the work that I've done, I've dedicated myself to doing for the city for the last several years. I'm a registered nurse with 22 years experience. I work for Boston Medical Center. I've seen it all, I've done it all. I truly care about the residents here. Uh, a couple years ago, I started serving in the city through a nonprofit organization that I started um, that seeks to prevent violence in the city. We work on mental health issues and provide culturally appropriate violence prevention education. I'm committed to serving the city. I want to continue to serve you in this capacity as city council. Like Moses said, we are a voice of the people. And that's all I can promise you is to be your voice, to be here for you, to care about you and your issues, to bring it to City Hall and to do what I can to advocate as I've been doing for the last several years. So that's all I got for you. I love you, Brockton. Thank you for having me. Moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Larry Curtis. Yeah. 
Thank you and good morning, Democrats. Uh, my name's Larry Curtis. I am a candidate for city council at large. I'm number seven on the ballot. Remember lucky seven for all you gamblers out there when you go to the polls. Uh, I do want to thank the Democratic City Committee for printing their, fly, uh, their program in my colors here, beautiful blue and white. Thank you, Deb, for that uh, you know, subliminal message. We appreciate that. Um, but the reality is, is that 20 years ago, my wife and I, with our three young sons, we moved to Brockton. We moved to Brockton, we chose Brockton because we're from Dorchester, Roxbury, and Somerville. We come from a large city. City of Brockton is your seventh largest city in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts today. There's close to 100,000 people that live here. We wanted city services to be available to us. It also allowed us to become a first time home buyer. 20 years ago, what we paid for our house, it is now three times more valuable. Thank you for the economy and the things that have happened around here. But more importantly, we need to look to our future. People have known me to be behind the scenes on campaigns. Michael Brady, when he ran for state representative, Mayor Bill Carpenter in the last three elections, that we've worked feverishly and tirelessly to make sure that the agenda for the city of Brockton remained positive and moved forward. The passing of Bill Carpenter was a shock to all of us. I made a decision that a way that I can ensure the positive legacy of Mayor Bill Carpenter can go forward was to pull my papers and become one of the 15 candidates we have for city council at large. I hope you will look at my candidacy. I hope when I talk about building a better Brockton with common sense leadership, I hope you recognize that I have some of that ability in me over the last 65 years that I've been alive, 49 years I've worked in healthcare support services, uh, assisting hospitals and healthcare organizations behind. But the most important thing about building a better Brockton, I want to take these last 30 seconds, can you turn to anybody else in this table, at the table you're at, the tables behind you, in front of you, introduce yourself to somebody you don't know. Because that is what building a better Brockton is all about. It's about becoming and recognizing who your neighbors are, what they're going to be able to do for you out there, and if you just take an extra moment to say, hello, my name is so-and-so, that's what's going to move our city forward. My name is Larry Curtis, candidate for Council at Large, number seven on the ballot. Thank you. Let's have a, another round of applause for uh, Larry Curtis, um, who said that he's 65, but he doesn't look a day over 37, right? Am I wrong? Right? Thanks. <laughs> All right. Raymond Henning. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whatever you decide. Uh, my name is Ray Henningsen. I'm running for city council at large. But first, I want to thank the BDCC for putting on today's event. I also want to give a shout out to all the grandparents today. Um, if you don't know, today is Grandparents Day. So give you a round of applause if you're a grandparent. So I may be the shortest candidate running today, um, certainly. But uh, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about myself. I'm a lifelong Brocktonian. I'm here running for city council at large because I care deeply for the city. I truly love the city. I've invested more money in the city by putting on new roofs, new decks, et cetera, on my house. So I'm committed to staying here. I'm committed to being part of this city. My parents live down the street on, on Endicott Street in Ward 6. I'm a Ward 7 resident. Um, I grew up here. I went to Ashfield, went to East Junior High when it was a junior high. And I am more than pleased to, to run for, for city council at large. I'm an accountant. I've been an accountant for 25 years. I think I bring a unique skill set to the city council, and I hope that you vote for me on September 17th and then again on November 5th. And I also want to thank all the candidates that are running today because it is not an easy job for any of us. We take a lot of time away from our families, our friends. As a matter of fact, yesterday was my 28th wedding anniversary. Um, so thanks to my wife who, who isn't here because she, I, I let her sleep in and enjoy uh, a, a nice, uh, comfortable day without me. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to again say my name is Ray Henningsen, running for City Council at Large. You can find out about me at rayforbrockton.com. And uh, I thank you very much and have a good day, guys. Thank you. All right. Next on the list, put your hands together for Mark Adams. Hi, everyone. 
Jeez, this is kind of loud, huh? Um, I'm not used to speaking with microphones, so speak into it. Thank you. Uh, just to say, um, I've lived in Brockton my entire life. I'm 55 years old. My father lived in Brockton. He grew up on Tyler Street over on the east side next to the O'Donnell Playground. And he made sure when I was 18, I registered to vote. And he made sure I registered as a Democrat. I've been a Democratic voter here in Brockton ever since. Um, I would just like to give you a little breakdown or background for myself, for those of you who don't know who I am. Um, as I said, I've been born and bred in Brockton. Um, I've raised three children. My youngest now is 19, going to UMass Amherst. Uh, the other two have graduated college. I've been practicing law here in the city of Brockton for the last, well, I'm on my 30th year of practicing law. During that time, I've worked as an assistant city solicitor uh, under two administrations, Jack Units and Jimmy Harrington. I have a good familiarity uh, with how the city operates and what can be done and what cannot be done by the city council. Uh, as the mayor indicated, I mean, you're only one of 11. You have to work together. You have to join together in order to get things done. Um, I have been working with people for my last, the last 29 years. I keep being told how much time I have left over here. So instead, <laughs> instead of being distracted, I am number nine on the ballot. Uh, I would ask you to give me at least one of those votes for uh, the four that you have for a counselor at large. And again, Mark Adams, number nine on the ballot. Thank you. I don't mean to be annoying. It's just like, you know, I'm doing it as I'm told. We already discussed that. All right, uh, Rita Mendez. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, we're just about noon time. So I am Rita Mendez, and it's such an honor to be here this morning and joining all of you. Very quickly about myself and why you should vote for me. And by the way, I'm number two on the ballot, just in case if I forget to say it at the end. I arrived in this country when I was 12 years old. I didn't speak English, and then I attended public education. I grew up in a single mother household who had to hold two, three different jobs. So I had zero to little parenting. And um, at 16, I was completely alone in this country. I had no legal guardian, but I was attending Brockton High School at the time. And that school gave me the necessary tools to not only be the first one in my family to graduate from high school, to be able to attend a higher education. And today, I hold a Juris Doctor degree. And I'm a practicing attorney here in the city of Brockton. I tell that story because, you know, my slogan says, a mother, not a politician. I really mean that. I mean that we're here to stand side by side with our students, with our schools, and provide the public education system the necessary tools in order for our kids to be able to go on in life and succeed. And we can do that because I'm a living proof of that, so I know we can. So vote for me September 17 and allow me to represent you and be a voice in city council. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. All right, next up we have Ann Beauregard. I'm Ann Beauregard, and I'm currently the Ward 5 City Councilor. I'm running at large because I made a decision to open up the slot, like I said, to see change and empower others. I'm number 15 on the ballot. I may be last, but I am here to ask you to vote on September 17th for me for the following reasons. I'm going to continue working toward education and more of it for our students, and that means funding and infrastructure for our decrepit, in some instances, school buildings, because we've had to wait for so long to get the funding that we deserved. I'm going to continue to show up for all the ward meetings, all the <laughs> committee meetings, subcommittees like accounts that I've been on for almost four years, traffic, real estate, etc. Uh, there's plenty of them. Ordinance, by the way, they're all very informative and we encourage you to join all of them. I'm going to encourage you to feel empowered. I'm going to continue to encourage you to be part of the system. I'm going to continue to work for public safety. 
I'm going to continue to work to see more funding for infrastructure. Don't think I didn't chase those guys out of here and ask them for the checks we deserve for our city. I'm going to continue to work for economic development. I've been part of the Metro South Chamber of Commerce for 20 years now. And I'm going to continue to encourage arts and culture in the city. I'm going to continue serving you. So the only thing that's going to change is that I want to be at large. Thank you. I'm going to be at large. Number 15, September 17. Thank you, people. All right, next up we have Gary Keith Sr. It's so important to say senior because I'm a junior, uh, and uh, I just, uh, you know, I changed my address, right? And then I start getting my dad's AARP catalogs. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a junior thing, but here you go. Thanks, Gary. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gary Keith Sr., and I'm a candidate for Council at Lodge. This is the fourth time that you will see my name on the ballot for Council at Lodge, so I've been very consistent in that area. I, I first ran in 2013 trying to serve you. Um, and the last two times, uh, basically, it's hard to unseat an incumbent. But this year is different. We have two open seats right now. And I'm asking you for your vote on September 17th and November 5th. My name is Gary Keefe Sr. I'm going to be the 10th name on the ballot. I use the slogan, Experience Matters. And the reason why I do that is because of the fact that I, at 60 years old, basically, life experiences also matter. But at the age of 17, I joined the military. And after that, after coming out of the military, I joined the ranks of uh, law enforcement here in our country. And uh, over the last, since uh, Mayor Carpenter was first elected, I, was, I served you as one of your um, planning board members and your zoning board members. So I gained that experience of four, serving in four years on both of those. I've been married to this beautiful lady here in the front seat here for um, 33 years. We raised seven kids in the city, and we now have five grandkids that we're also raising in the city. So I bring the experience that most of your candidates do not have except for the incumbents, and I'm asking you to let me serve you in your city council as your next councilor at large. My name is Gary Keith. I'm the number 10th name on the ballot, and thank you for your time. All right, next up we have Adias Pierre. All right, and let me just point out your socks are amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ajis Pierre, and I'm running for city council at large. 25 years ago, Brockton welcomed me with open arms. No mother, no father, no brother, no sister to watch over me. I went to work. I went to school. I'll graduate with a criminal justice. I graduate from the police academy, and now I'm working for the sheriff department. I believe Brockton is a great city, is a diverse city, and diversity is a beautiful thing. That's why I'm running for city councilor. You can have a good mayor, but you don't have a good chamber to work with the mayor, you're not gonna get no result. So I will always work for you. I will fight for you. I believe in Brockton. My kids live in Brockton. We all cannot go to City Hall, but you need to send someone to advocate on your behalf. And I can tell you right now, I'm one of the uh, city councilors. Please remember, I'm number one on the ballot. What number? Number one on the ballot. You can miss it. I will always fight for you. Thank you. No, number one, one minute left, yes. I will always fight for you because I believe in Brockton. I see uh, people say, you know what, I'm moving out of Brockton because Brockton is so bad. Me, I said, I'm not leaving, I'm here to make Brockton better for everybody. No matter where you're from, Brockton should welcome you. We need more business. We need more schools. And we need more after school programs for our children. I'm here, I mean, I'm gonna fight for your kids because Brockton is home. Please don't forget, on Sep September 17th, Number one on the ballot, send me to City Hall and I will always work for you. My name is Adrius Pierre and I'm running for City Council at Life. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Democrat. Right. So that will uh, wrap up our whole Councilor at Large segment here. Now let's get to the uh, more localized wards. Uh, people running for ward councilors. So, uh, ward, what number? Adius, number one? 
Number one? Oh, Ward one. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Tim Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, everybody that left is still here. First of all, I want to say welcome to Ward one. A lot of you people think you're in Ward six, but I was looking at the map this morning and I decided I really like this building. So I took my Sharpie and I, and I made this part of Ward one. So thank you for being in Ward one. But I tell you the reason I say that. The reason I say that is a joke, but it's not a joke. We heard the congressman and the senator talk earlier about how important it is that we get rid of that knucklehead down in D.C. Well, let me tell you, that starts at the grassroots level. It's what we do here in Brockton and all the other cities and towns that, that determines what happens across the country. And in this room, I should be able to have to just say just one thing. I am the only Democrat running in Ward 1 for City Council. I've been a 45-year member of this committee and worked on Democratic campaigns before I was old enough to vote. So I ask you as Democrats, and the people left in this room are the real Democrats, I'm not here to ask you what you can do for me. I was trained, what can we do for this party? Because it's important. Because it's not just what happens in the White House, it's getting rid of people like Mitch McConnell. Because when you elect, when you elect people at the low level, that's where they get a bench. And somebody who's a Republican or an unenrolled decides to run for state rep next year or state senate. Then they run for Congress. And eventually, they're running and, and they're in the Senate and the, the Congress. And that's where we lose control of the Supreme Court and the White House. So as a Democrat, I ask you to support the only Democrat in Ward 1. Thank you, Tim Cruz, on September 17th. Thank you very much. You're not the only Democrat in Ward 1. Just saying. <laughs> oh, running, 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 running. All right, so uh, great. So we're going to skip right to Ward 3. Uh, Marlon Green. Good morning, Democrats. Good morning. My name is Marlon Green, and I am running for I'm City Council Ward 3. Approximately 30 years ago, two of the most courageous and incredible folks that I know my parents, Bertie and Loris Green, decided to migrate their family from Jamaica to the United States. It's been 30 years now, almost 31 years now, since we, uh, we've come um, to the U.S. And America, Boston, and most importantly, Brockton, has been incredible and great to us as a family. I've been able to go off to I've been able to go off to college. I did my undergrad in economics, and then I went back to a grad school, and I did my master's in business management. Uh, for the past 18 years, I've been serving my community as, as a member of the clergy. And for the past 17 years, I've been working professionally as a research manager in several of our Boston hospitals. I come to this table. I enter this race. Because it's been said, to whom much is given, much is required. And I've attained a lot, and a lot has been placed on me, and it is incumbent upon me as an individual to give back to the great city of Brockton. I'm running so that we can build today for a better tomorrow. Build today so that we have a better tomorrow for our kids, our parents and grandparents and generations to come. Join me on this race as we build this great city and this great Ward 3 for a better tomorrow. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. All right. Next up, we have Dennis Irineri. Good morning or good afternoon. I'm not, I'm not too sure. But in, in any case, it's a great pleasure to be here today. And as I was just in indicating to some of the other people that are here today, when I began as a young Democrat back in the 1980s, I served as the Democratic treasurer, and I was also involved in running these type of functions. I worked with then the chairman of the uh, Democratic City Committee, which was Paul Studinsky Sr., state representative, city council, and former mayor of this great city. He and I and Paul Sullivan would put together one mean-ass breakfast, to be truthful with you. So uh, we would have a crowd. We always had a crowd. There was a Democratic crowd at all the functions. We brought in great guests. And if you even look at the cover of the program, what do you see? The biggest guest you always brought to a breakfast? 
with Senator Ted Kennedy. Why? Because Paul could always get a hold of him. He knew where to find him, and he always showed up, and we'd always have a great crowd like this. So it's, it's tremendous to have that crowd, and congratulations to all of you that are, that are here today. I, I don't think I'm a stranger here to not only the Democratic Party, but to the, to the city of Brockton in, in itself. And I know there's new people that are in the city every single day. I served um, a, a good many years as a, as a member of the Brockton School Committee, and I've been serving for the last 16 years as the Ward 3 City Councilor. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you all the accomplishments that I've made or what, what we've done in Ward 3 because we've done a lot. If we do that, then we're going to be here for dinner, and I don't think we want to be here that long. But in any case, I'm just letting you know I am a candidate for re-election. I'm on the November ballot. This isn't about the September ballot for me. I'm on the November ballot, and I'm, and I'm sure I'll, I will proceed as I've always done with the people of Ward 3. But I just want to make sure that everybody gets out and does what they're supposed to do on primary day. That's what this is all about right now. Don't be tricked up by the primary. A lot of people don't like to vote in a primary. You've got to get out. You've got to get out and vote for your candidates. Don't leave it astray. Get out and do your job. And in the intake, when I'm reelected, I'm going to continue to do what I have to do for the people of Ward 3, the people of the city of Brockton, work with my colleagues, continue to move the city forward. Remember, more, more development brings good economic re revenue here to the city, see, something that we need. If you want things done, please fire. Noises stopped in, the, in, your, in your neighborhoods, and you want traffic control, which we need in the city, you need revenue. So get out there. Cast your vote in September, and I'm looking forward for the November election. Thank you very much. Moving forward. All right, so on to Ward 5. Is she here? I don't know that she's Is here. Is Nancy here? Nancy DiCimato. No? No. Nancy's not here. Put your hands together for Dory Smith. Um, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Dory Smith, and I'm a candidate for Ward 5 City Council. Um, at present, I am a full-time civil rights and special education monitor with the Department of Education. I am the membership chair of this organization. I'm Ward 5 chair and the affirmative action outreach officer for this, for this organization here today, the Brockton Democrats, and I am honored. And I want to say that I enjoy working for people. Yes. That is my number one love working for people in their interest. I want, to, I want to let you know, the reason why I told you I have a full-time job is because running for Ward 5 City Council is the people's voice. Amen. I have a voice, but the people of Ward 5 need to have their own voice and need to come together. And there are housing developments, there are homes, and there are triple-deck apartments in the Ward 5, and I want to work for everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much, and have a good day. I'm pretty sure that's what they refer to as a mic drop, uh, but thank you. <laughs> All right, so now we're on award six. So let's uh, put our hands together for Jack Lally. I got to say, I was, a little, I was a little taken aback by Councillor Cruz. Um, I'm, I am young, but I'm old enough to know that it's really, really tough to, uh, to get out Sharpie. So, <laughs> so welcome, to, welcome to Ward 1's embassy in Ward 6. You know, that's, that's the best I can do for now. We're working on it, though. We are working on a solution. No, I, I thank you for the opportunity to speak. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I've, I've been a counselor for three and a half years now. You know, you have that, you, you have that kind of time, and you start seeing things come to fruition that, that you got to work on. And it's, it's really a, uh, a nice thing to see and a nice feeling to, to drive by things and go, well, you know what, I had a hand in that. And, you know, I, I appreciate all the support I've received so far. You know, we're still working on infrastructure, public safety, fiscal responsibility, improving the city. Uh, because for, after all, it does say for a better Brockton. That's what we're working on. Um, but, you know, I, I pride myself on, on connectivity, you know, making sure I call you back, making sure I work with you, and working as hard as I can. Those are the two promises I offer. Those are the two promises I fulfill. I'm around, I'm out knocking doors, my number and my email are available. If you have any questions, any concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Um, but uh, now we're going to have uh, Julio Pomar. Hello, my fellow Brocktonians. My name is Julio Cesar Pomar. I grew up here in Brockton. I came from the United States, from Peru. Now, 
I'm not going to sit here and talk to you over and over again what it's already all on the table. So I'm going to ask you, I know you guys can read. Take a look at my card. Tells you about me. The back tells you what I want to do. I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of motivation, though. Everybody wants to know what makes you want to make the city better. You know what makes me want to make the city better? This little girl holding my hand right, right here next to me. Her name's Gianna. I don't know what her parents are. I don't know who she is, but I know she grew up here in Brockton. Just kid, I just grabbed. And this little kid, Carmen's uh, watching her here. This little kid, I want her to have all the opportunities in the city of Brockton, all the safety in the city of Brockton. I want her to have all the future great things in the city of Brockton, and I want to be a part of that city of Brockton. I'm going to be that city of Brockton. I want to make the city safer. I'm going to make the city better. I'm going to be a part of making the city back to where it was in the 50s and 60s. And Brockton back then was the jewel of Southeast Massachusetts, and I want to be the jewel of Southeast Massachusetts. I'm going to start one ward at a time, my home ward of Ward 6, and I'm going to make every ward and every part of the city the best. Not for me, not for my wife, not for people older than me, they want it too, but I want it for the next generation. For this little girl right here, I want to be able to walk home from school and not walk over needles. I want her to go, go to school and learn, and learn about not just what people like the guy in, May, in the White House says right now, but I want, pe I want her to learn about her culture and all the other cultures. The Brockton is considered the city of champions. It is a city of champions, but more so Brockton is a city of cultures. It's always been a city of cultures. It always will be the city of cultures, regardless of what color your skin you are. Wherever you come from the world, you come to Brockton. Brockton is representative of all the countries in the world. That's the Brockton I want to have. That's the Brockton I want to be. Not for me, but for this little girl, right? If she could talk, she'd say vote for Julio. Vote for Julio. See you in November. Thank you very much. Now, uh, last but not least, put your hand together for uh, Councillor Shirley Azak. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I guess the, I am the last candidate up here to speak to you. And I have to tell you, um, I've been a lifelong Democrat, and I've always been proud to be a Democrat. And this is one of my favorite Democratic events of the year. This is actually the first year I've been here where Red Sullivan hasn't been sitting out here, and um, we do miss him. So I just want to recognize that. Uh, six years ago, I've been serving as your Ward 7 Councilor for the past six years. and. Um, I, will, I want to continue to serve you as your Ward uh, 7 counselor. So I hope you, uh, everybody goes out and votes for me, fill in that bubble. Uh, in November, we don't have a primary in Ward 7, but I am the only Democrat that in Ward, as Ward 7 counselor on the ballot. So I hope everybody will go out and vote for us. Six, six years ago, I only made two promises, and those promises were that I would continue to answer my phone whenever my constituents called, and that's what this job is. I answer my phone, and I, we work with our constituents to make sure that we take care of their problems, their issues in the city, and the other promise was to work with whoever was in the mayor's office, and that's what I will continue to do. So with everybody's help, I hope I'm successful in November and get reelected to be a Ward 7 City Councilor. Enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. And with that being said, I would like to thank the, the fabulous group <laughs> of people that took their time to put this event together. Without them, we wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't have been successful. We have Sue Hayes, she's our chair. Donna Jones was our co-chair. We have Jeff Hayes. Ann Beauregard. <laughs> Let me get the list here. There's a very long list because you can't do it yourself. Chuck Blanchett, our master of ceremonies. Peggy Curtis that does our floral decorations. Bob Jarvis, Kelly Hanlon. Oh my God, she was here at seven o'clock. Thank you, Kelly. Sue Thomasy, Steve Thomasy, who you can always count on. Alan Pesevich, Deb Mullen, Jerry Conifrey, Doris Smith, Blessing Rogers, Sue Nicastro, Joan Madden Holland, Eleanor Wentworth, Mark Osborne, and myself. Boo! <laughs> And in closing, if I've forgotten anything, 
I'd like to just say, get out and work for a Democratic candidate. Let's do this. One minute left. <laughs> All right, Mark. Uh, let's do this this uh, September 17th. Get out and vote, please. Thank you.